Amen. Send me. I'll go. Even if I have to go all by myself. Again, we welcome all of you to the month of May. May Day, as she said it. <laughs> the first of May, 2022. We're just so grateful for all of you. We thank God for protecting us and leading and guiding us to another worship experience. Our labor is not in vain. The church is not packed, but how many know we all right? Because long as God is here and we can come into his presence, I don't know about you, but I feel all right because he's been with me every step of the way. And Lord, I thank you this morning. I know you didn't have to do it, but it was just bright early this morning. He woke me up. He started me on my way. He gave me activities of my limb, portion of my health and strength. And Lord, I thank you. Because it could have been, could have been the other way. But Lord, I thank you this morning for looking beyond my faults and loving me anyway. Again, we just greet y'all. I feel all right this morning, y'all, because God has been good to us. As I look around the church, he has been mighty, been mighty good to us. Hadn't always got it right, but yet he has always been right there. there. Amen. So we, we're not going to prolong the time. I just want to thank God for my duo partner. (laughs) My preaching partner. (laughs) Who so the Ivers have been doing it up lately. <laughs> amen, amen. Somebody call him God Milk. Holly, Holly boy, whatever you want to call him today. Amen. We just want to thank God for his friendship. Just want to thank God for the church family. And we know our other partner would be here today, but we know he's at his home church. Uh, you know, might not have Glenville. They had to go there on the fir- uh, first Sunday in May. They go there, but we know they will be here because of our friendship. We just want to thank God for all of you. And-
I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. If mother don't go, father don't go, sister don't go. to go by myself. I have to go by myself. I'll sing if I have to sing by myself. I have to sing by myself. I'll sing if I have to sing by myself. I have to sing by myself. If mother don't sing, father don't sing. If I have to sing by myself, I have to sing by myself. I'll serve if I have to serve by myself. I have to serve by myself. I'll serve if I have to serve by myself. I have to serve by myself. Yes, mother, don't serve. Father,
pa Pastor Pastor Brown. Amen, amen. I want to pray for friendship, great in the Jerusalem, Mount Olive, Glenville. Yes, yes, yes. All the lost and unsaved. There'll be another. If not, let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, right now we come. Father God, we come for no form, no fashion. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you. Father God, we come to let you know we appreciate you. Yes. We appreciate you touching us early this morning. Father God, we got so much to be thankful for. So much, so much, so much. We should learn to take life more seriously. Take each day as a gift from on high. <clears throat> because we may not get another one, Father. This may be the last time we open our eyes, Father. Last time up and down the dangerous highways and byways, Father. So right now we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that one more, one more. Thank you, Lord, for letting me not be in the ambulance again. Yes. Father, we thank you for food on the table, waking us up, the kids behaving, Father. We thank you for the elders right now, Father. Father, thank you for Reverend McGee right now. Father, he's on up there, but he's still a friend that can make me laugh, Father. Thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. Father, cover him and keep him, Father. Father, I pray for friendship right now. Father, keep him on, on high. Keep them straight, Father. Keep them in line, Father. Keep them blessed. Keep them encouraged, Father. Father God, I pray for the preacher you planted here. I thank you for letting him be a true friend, Father. Yes. Never had a friend like him before, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Keep him and bless him and strengthen him, Father. Father, let him preach with, with power today, Father. Father, give him that word from on high, Father. Don't let the word go out void, Father. Yes. Father, use him. I know he's meditated. I know he's studied. You know that, Lord, but bless him. Father, let your word bless us today. Father, I pray for all the names that were called out. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Bless them and meet them, O oh Lord, at their point of need. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help us, Father. We can't do this journey without you, O oh Lord. Because sin is everywhere, just like in Sunday school. We've been forgiven, but Father, we go right back. Yes. We return, Father. Just like the dog to the vomit, Father. It's nasty, but we go right back. So, Father, help us today, O oh Lord. And Father, I pray for this offering that was collected. Yes, Lord. Father, bless it and bless. use it in a mighty, mighty way. Yes, Lord. All this we pray mm -hmm. in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 God has. God has.
Amen. The Lord has smiled on me. He has been good to me. Is there any witnesses in the house? No, the Lord has smiled on me. He's been really, really, really. He has been really, really good to me. Amen. We're, we're grateful. Heart cannot explain it. The psalmist say, even if I had a thousand tongues, yes. I couldn't thank the Lord enough because he's been really good yes, to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, once again, we come before your presence with thanksgiving. Yes, we enter into the month of May with thanksgiving, Father yes. God, asking yes, you Father. to order our steps. Mm -hmm. Lead and guide us every step of the way. Yes, sir. Hold us in the palm of Hold your hand. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger, yes. any matter of disease. Yes. Continue to allow us to look to the hills which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help come from you, O oh Lord. You are our strength and our redeemer. Bless our mother of the church. Bless all the mothers of the church. As this month of May, we will celebrate mothers. We thank them right now, Father God. We give them their flowers while they yet live. We thank them for paving the way. We thank you for life today. We thank you for all that they have done. And we celebrate them, not just today, but each and every day. These doors swing open here at Friendship. We thank our mothers on today, Father God, for paving the way. We thank you for today, Father God. We thank you for the message in advance for all that you're going to do. Let the Holy Spirit show up and show out and preach this unto your people, the Word of God. Thank you for my friend, Pastor Will Rayford, and Father God, and Eugene Brown. Thank them right now, Father God, for their friendship, for their labor, for our labor is never in vain. Thank you for the deacons this morning, all the deacons that are on the deacon board, the deacon wide, the choir, the ushers, the musicians, Father God, our pianists, everybody under the sound of my weak voice. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We, you, Father. we praise you right now for all that you have done. And action now, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. It is in Jesus' name we do pray and we do say amen, amen, amen and amen again. Well, we're not going to hold y'all long today, but we just thank God for all of you. And I say that from the bottom of my heart. But there is, Pastor Rafa, a word from the Lord. It has been a busy week for me. I've been up and down the highways, mm -hmm. spending time with the children at Russell County Middle School, trying to show them that life is worth living. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are some children that need some attention. They yeah, need some yeah. special direction. They need a little help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need a jump start. They yeah. need a boost. Yeah. So on Thursday, we were able to take them to a field trip. And in that field trip, I'm getting ahead of myself, but in that field trip, I y'all know I'm always on guard, Deacon Austin, yeah. looking for angles and looking for ways to try and encourage. And I was encouraged myself. So if you have your Bibles this morning, we ask you to turn with us to Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth. Chapter number 12. And we would like for you to put a pen in your Bibles, starting at verse number 12. Again, chapter 12. And we would like to commence reading at verse number 12. Again. 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12, and we would like to commence reading at verse number 12. 
In this passage, Paul deals with the body of Christ. In verse number 12, Paul says, For as the body is one, and have many members, and all the members of that one body being many, or one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Our last verse, verse number 14. For the body is not one member, but many. Amen. You may be seated. Let me set this up. My brothers and sisters, here it was. Many of you know, there in Opelika, they have Southern Union State Community College. That's where we went, all the concerned clergy here in Russell County. Men and women, we went there, met these young men there, along with their chaperones. And we got a tour of the campus. And we know most community colleges are focused on working on automobiles and air conditions and fixing all different things of different trades. And, and to my amazement, these young people was amazed when the instructor was showing them how to make plastic caps and little gears and different things. They was amazed. I was amazed. And I was like, wow. But here it was. We went into this one hole. And there on the board, that was a sign from Henry Ford. Y'all know Henry Ford, right? Yeah. The one who made the what? The automobile. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that was this phrase. I'm, and Pastor Rave, you got to look at it. Hear what it said. It takes a team. That, that's what it said. So that's what I want to talk about today. <laughs> it takes a team. Amen. Ushers, you may retire. Thank you. But here it is, my brothers and sisters. Henry Ford goes on to coin three phrases. Here's what he says on the first phrase. He says, coming together is the beginning. The second thing he coined is, look what he said. He said, keeping together is progress. And the third thing he says, he says, and working together is success. Yes. So here I am minding my own business in Sony School. And Sister Ivy was teaching, and it caught my attention that there in the Sunday school lesson this morning, it said these words, we are united together in Christ because of the resurrection. That's right. That's, right. <laughs> that, that's what it said. It said it in the Sunday school. It said we are united together. Together now, not, not separate, but we're united together in Christ because of the resurrection. So it takes a team. Have you ever seen Pastor Rayford, a basketball team, one player? He may score all the points, but they can't win. Because one player, Deacon Poet, can't play defense on all five players. It takes a team. On a football team, you have offense and you have defense. In other words, they all got to what? Do they part. Working together to ensure they have what? Success. So, my brothers and sisters, this is not the first time Paul talks about unity. 
This is not the first time he talks about teamwork. But yet here in 1 Corinthians, we get to understand that Paul says, in order for the will of God to be done, we must all work together. Mm -hmm. So he uses the phrase body because we know we all live in the body. Mm -hmm. Now we know that the body is special. We all have two hands. We have two feet. Mm -hmm. We have two eyes. We have two ears. Mm -hmm. We have a nose and one mouth. Mm -hmm. And all of them work together to ensure we can express ourselves. Right. Now, each one of them work independently to ensure the brain functions. In other words, what I'm saying, the brain tells them what to do. Which is what I'm saying is Christ is our head. He tells us what to do in terms of the body. So this is specifically related to how we are to operate inside of the church. Now, it's easy if I could do everything myself. I could preach and run back there and take the usher and let folks in. And then run up to the choir stand, sing my own song. I'm just saying. But that wouldn't work out right. <laughs> Help me somebody. By the way, that ain't going to work out too well. See, and then I run over there and take Sister McGill's spot and play the piano. But see, that's not using everybody in the church. See, we all have a function. So Paul simply reminds us that each member of the church is important. He said we have to operate together, not divided, not going in different direction. But he simply says this morning, we ought to be one. Working on the same level. Just as the choir sang, they was harmonically singing together. Yes, yes. Now, if one or two of them are off key, mm -hmm. we cannot make beautiful music. Oh, but if we all are on key, we can make beautiful music yes. together. Yes. So Paul simply said this morning, all the gifts that God has given to the body, to the church, are to operate under the same condition. Here, here's my example. You have your car. You have a motor. You have tires. You have the steering wheel. Now, without any of them, without no steering wheel, you can't go nowhere. Without no motor, you simply not going nowhere. I'm just saying. And if you got the motor and you got the steering wheel, Deacon Port, and you ain't got no tires, you simply not going. Come on, help me somebody, y'all. In other words, the car has a function as one as you move down the road. Yes, yes, yes. But you're operating as a head. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no you, the car can't drive itself. I know there's some cars that can. They've shown some. They can operate them from the house. Mm -hmm. But them dangerous cars. <laughs> when you can't see and they... Working on cameras and all that stuff. What if the technology go out? What if? I'm just saying, what if? But we are supposed to operate together. So Paul says, these gifts are for the body of Christ. Now, let's look at the world today. Even in our children. We was brought up some of us based on individual achievements. Well, I was brought up talking about teamwork. Mm -hmm. Because if you got more than one sibling mm -hmm. inside your house, you knew how to work together. Right. We didn't have the same, same function. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about my house. I had my chore, they had their chores. Mm -hmm. And each person had to do what? They chores. Now, if you didn't do your chores, they knew it. If the hog didn't get fed, we, you knew it. Because them hogs going to go off. <laughs> they going to let you know they ain't been fed. The cow, I'm just saying, they know. 
So they know something didn't happen. So in each household, you knew you had your function, your chore that needed to be done. To work together as a family, we all had to come to an agreement to do our part. Mm -hmm. But even in today's society, we often focus on individuality. What are you saying, preacher? Because everybody now is get all I can while I can and not and ignore everybody else around us. This is what society is teaching our children. Don't worry about nobody else. But that can't happen in the body of Christ because we all need one another. We all need one another. So my brothers and sisters, it's easy. To focus on your individual stats. But what about your brothers and sisters? What if they need help? It's good to have all the knowledge. It's good to be the smartest person. But what about lifting up your brothers and sisters? That they may be encouraged. What about helping somebody else along the way? It's not just in the body of Christ. What about somebody on your job, bro Campbell, that needs a helping hand? Do you, do you tell him to go figure it out on his own? Or do you tell him, look, let me give you a helping hand? Because this extends farther than just the church, but it extends into our community to always lend a helping hand. So my brothers and sisters, the message today is simply this. It takes a team and there's no I in team. <laughs> Pastor Rachel, <laughs> there is no I in team. We're in it together. No matter where you go, whether it's in the corporate world, whether it's in sports, whether it's in industry, whether it's in the military, whether it's in politics, whether it's in religion, it doesn't matter. All must operate together in order to attain their goal or to be successful. Now, what if for a second, if one person had all the power, what if for a second you go to a job and you person all got all the keys and you can't get in because they late. What? I'm just saying, what if, what if? if that one person mm -hmm. controls everything and he never gives nobody else any help? I'm just saying, what if? That's not teamwork. That's individuality. And that company will not work or go further because one person controls it all. But for Paul says, for the body, there are many members, but there is one body operating in the same. Before I get to my text this morning, I tried to find as many scriptures I can to give you the Bible perspective of operating in unity. And as I looked at it, Pastor Rayford, in the Old Testament, it doesn't really talk too much about unity. But I did run across one, and we say it all the time. Psalms 133, verse 1. And it says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And then we skip over to the New Testament. And there in John chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus said that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And there in Romans chapter 12, verse 4 and 5, Paul said, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. 
And there in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul says again, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak, look, the same thing, and that there be no division amongst you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. And there in Ephesians, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7, there is one body, there is one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. There is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. There is one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But he says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Then Paul goes in Philippians chapter 2 verse 2. He said, fulfill ye my joy that ye may be, look, like-minded, having the same love. Being of one accord and of one mind. Now you see all of those scriptures was pointing us that we simply need to work together. Working together you can achieve more. By yourself you may struggle. But together we can accomplish more. My brothers and sisters, Paul just paints a picture. And here at the beginning of 1 Corinthians, he gives us, before we get to verse 12, he gives us an illustration on what the Corinthian church are struggling with. They're struggling. They're struggling with their gifts. They're struggling now. They're struggling because some have became thinking that they're better than others. You know, we got that in the world today. Those that think they're better than you. Those that think that because you're from a small town, they're better than you. You know, I'm just fixing it up the way I want to fix it up. Because they went to Harvard and Yale, they think they better than you. Because you went to community college and you didn't go to a four-year college, Deacon Austin, they think they better than you. But I'm just saying, but Paul said we are all the same. He said we're the same. Now look what he says. He says that the spiritual gifts given to each person by the Holy Spirit are simply special abilities that are to be used for the body of Christ. In other words, the church. It's good to have all these gifts. But if you sit on the pew and don't use them, then what good are they for? Rafa, what good is you to preach if you don't ever preach? Right. I mean, you have the gift. Yeah. But what if you always stay at home right. and you don't ever go to church? Right. What if you got a good singing voice? Mm -hmm. You're good in the shower, but you don't ever get in the choir. <laughs> I'm just saying it sounds good. But it's not doing the body of Christ any good. Because we're to come together to make beautiful music yes, sir. Yes, together. Yes. But Paul says all these spiritual gifts comes mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You may be able to sing, but it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that makes you effective. Yes, yes, yes. It's the anointing that allows us, Pastor Rayford, to preach with power and conviction. It's the anointing. It, Paul says, look, because you have these gifts, not one gift is superior to the other. That's right. That's right. It said they all are to work together like we are today in corporate worship. We come. You need those in the pew. You need those in the choir stand. You need those in the deacon corner. You need those in the amen corner. We all are coming together collaboratively to praise and worship the true and living God. Yes, 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 yes. So my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Paul says for the Corinth church mm -hmm. that they have become division. That they have become using their gifts 
power over other people. Yeah. And because of this, it's causing rivalry. Well. Now, I'm not trying to race with Pastor Rafa. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to race with anybody. Yeah. I'm just trying to stay in my lane. <laughs> well, okay. Because when you start looking in other people's lane, mm -hmm. you lose focus on your race. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you begin to digress. That's right. And you begin to lose focus. That's right. But as a body, we can't lose focus, y'all. That's right. That's right. We got to each do our part. Yeah. Sunday after Sunday, yeah. we all got to do our part. Mm -hmm. And if you misuse your spiritual gift, yeah. Joel said to God, give it. And the Lord will surely take it away. If you use it for his glory, he'll enlarge your territory. If you do it as Pastor Ray for preach last Sunday, if you're humble with it, he'll lift you up. <laughs> he'll, 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 he'll give you more than what you bargained for. Because you're humble, you're meek, and you're trying to use your gift to edify the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 Lord. My brothers and sisters, our country is divided. Mm -hmm. We see it all over the news. Yeah. They're divided. Mm -hmm. There's no common good. They're fighting against each other. Yeah. The Democratic Party against the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. They can't find no common ground. To move this country in the right direction. And you're wondering why our country is failing. Because nobody honor, as what the Bible said, as love your neighbor. The Bible is clear that you're even supposed to love your enemies. <laughs> it is clear inside the Bible on how we are to operate as simple members of the body of Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. we must never use our gifts yes. as a means of manipulating others or serving our own self-interest. Right. Right. I ran across this famous quote that said, there's an old saying that refers to preachers. Mm -hmm. Some were sent yes. and then some just went. Well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Can I say that again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> some were sent. And then some just went. In other words, Paul says, if you're speaking about Christ, yes. then you can know their fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're not speaking about Christ, yes. then you know they're selfish. It's in the text. Paul is saying you should know them mm -hmm. because of the words that they speak. Yes. If they claim to speak for God, well. then they work should speak for them. Now, if they don't, then they are false accusers yeah. is really what Paul was dealing with in the text. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you today, don't go off of my words. Yeah. Don't go off of Pastor Rafer's word. Well. I encourage you to read your word for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we encourage you to go to Bible study. Well. This is why we encourage you to go to Sunday school. This is why we encourage you to come to worship experience that you may understand the word that is being taught and preached. That way you get an understanding of what God is saying to the church. Can I tell you, we all have been given our iron. Now, if you don't sharpen it, now that's up to you. Because iron sharpen iron. That's right. That's right. Now, if you grab, you come close enough, now you might get sharp because I'm going to speak some Jesus. But I'm just saying, we are supposed to sharpen each other, yeah. but you also got to sharpen your own axe. Well. So in our text, Paul compares the body of Christ to the human body. In other words, Paul says we're not robots, Rafer. We're not just somebody that is being manipulated. He said, no, we all have been given a measure of faith. Mm -hmm. 
We all have been given gifts. Yes. And in that measure of faith, you're called upon to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you yes. and operate it in the way God has given unto you. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's preaching, then preach. Then if it's singing, then sing. If it's ushering, then usher. Then if it's happened in hospitality, then help somebody else along. But whatever it is, do it for the glory of God. You must do it for the glory of God. But what he says to us today, he says each part has a specific function in order to attain effectiveness. Mm -hmm. In order to be successful, we must all operate on the same level. Yes. Yes. But if my level is higher than yours, then I'm supposed to help you up to the next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if I got, I'm on the 10th floor at Rayford, mm -hmm. and you're on the second floor, I'm supposed to help you to get to the 10th floor. Because if I don't, that's going to be a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And you don't want me to come back down to the second floor mm -hmm. when I done seen the 10th floor. Mm -hmm. right. right. I should bring you up a little higher mm -hmm. so you can get a bird's eye view yes. on what the 10th floor looked like. Help me, somebody. <laughs> and that's what Paul said. Because where one body is, we're supposed to help somebody else get to where they need to be. Because we're not supposed to leave anybody behind. We're supposed to make it a level playing field. So Paul says, the Christian must avoid two errors. One, becoming too proud. Paul says, if you become too proud, you'll miss out on your blessing. The second thing, Paul says, the second thing is, as a, as a member, don't think you have nothing to offer. Everybody in the body of Christ have something to offer to the church, no matter what it is. Find your gift, and whatever that gift is, do it. Don't worry about what folks say. But glorify your God which is in heaven. Then Paul gives us this dynamic DNA. Mm -hmm. Now we know our DNA are connected with our family members, yeah. which is passed down from our forefathers up until now. Mm -hmm. But Paul says the spiritual DNA yeah. is only because of what Christ have done. He said this spiritual DNA connects us as believers. Look what he says, Rayford. He says now we have identity because of Christ. He said this essential thing is all because of the blood of Jesus. It has nothing else. He said all believers are baptized into one Holy Spirit, which makes one body. I know we cannot fathom. But I'm glad God math is not human math. That's right. That's right. Cause God math said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit yes. is one, yes. not three. Yes, sir. It's one operating on our behalf that we may reach full maturity to become like Christ. Yes, yes, sir. What are you saying, preacher? Mm -hmm. All members of God's family are one. One spiritual body. Yeah. We all trying to get to that heavenly location. That's right. All right. All right. To see Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is our function. This is why we're doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Because our faith said if we believe in Jesus, yes. Yes. we'll go to that place where he said, I go and prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. That where I am, you may be also. Yes. Yes. This is that place we're working for. This is that place we're trying to get to. Because if not, our faith will be in vain if Jesus said it and didn't, it didn't happen. So Paul said, because of this spiritual body, Jesus has already made it in. 
So my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. using the analogy of the body, Paul emphasized the importance of each church member. But there in verse 14 through 17, he stresses how insignificant the part is taken away. Mm -hmm. If you have no hand, then how are you going to feed yourself? That's right. If you have no feet, how are you going to get from point A to point B? How if you have no eyes, how are you going to see? I'm saying, Paul said all of these parts are individual, but they're all needed in order for the body yes, yes, to yes, function. Yes, yes, yes. He said they all are needed. He said each one of them are important. Neither one is less effective because if you take it away, then the body simply struggles. He said the body struggles. Mm -hmm. So my brothers and sisters, don't get jealous of other people's gifts. That's right. Operate within your gift. Yeah. And if you want another gift, ask God. But if he didn't give you singing, don't worry about singing. Right. If he didn't give you preaching, don't worry about preaching. Mm -hmm. If he didn't give you ushering, don't worry about ushering. Mm -hmm. if, I'm just saying, if he didn't give it to you, but you're still an important part of the body yes, 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 yes. of Christ. Yes, Lord. In other words, we still need you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We still need you to come. Yeah. Even it's just saying amen, Rafa. Mm -hmm. We need you to come and be a part of the body to worship and to praise his holy name. Yes, now, I don't have to go too far because my three points have already been identified and Brother Henry Ford, he, he gave me that. I didn't have to look for it, Rafa, because it's the same thing what he said. Coming together is the beginning. That's number one. Coming together, using our gifts to glorify God and to profess our faith. It's simply what the psalmist says in 122 and 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, we didn't come here to put on no show, no fashion, but we come to get our praise on. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, yes. The psalmist says, his delight is in going to church. His delight is going and meeting with fellow believers, having the same mind, having the same goal, which is to worship our God. That's why I came. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to glorify my God. My brothers and sisters, the psalmist says, now you can either be a chore or it can be a delight. Now, if it's a chore, we know how we do chores. Sometimes we lag in doing it. Sometimes we delay in doing it. I'm talking about the chores now. Yeah, yeah, but if yeah. you love something and you delight in something, how many know you get excited? You get excited about something that you love to do. I don't play golf, but those that go to the golf course, they can't wait till the next morning to get their golf club and to get on that cart, Rafa, and to go out there to the hit range and to hit that little white ball. They excited. But don't you know I get excited by church, y'all? Yes, yes. I get excited by coming down 431, coming to little old friendship, and talking about having a good time. Well, talking about having church in all walks of life, yeah. there is a starting point. Mm -hmm. Now, we ain't all been saved all of our lives. That was a starting point. Mm -hmm. The songwriter said, I found him on Monday. Yeah. I found him on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Somebody else said, I found him on Wednesday. Yeah. Then somebody else said, I found him on Thursday. And somebody said, I found him on Friday. Yeah. Somebody said, I found him on Saturday. And somebody made a shout and said, Raven, I found him on Sunday. Yeah. In other words, my day ain't your day. But that was a starting point somewhere along the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I like what John says in chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, mm -hmm. 
except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, I said unto thee, ye must be, you got to be born again. That's our starting point. When we have been born again, God have given us a second chance. We now can come into the unity and work together for the glory of God. But don't you know God promises great blessings for his people? But many of the blessing that God has professed is that it is active participation. That were in Hebrews, you remember, 1025. Not forsaking assembling ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yes, yes. In other words, we gathering together to share our faith. Sharing our testimony, sharing what God have done, sharing that he brought us from a mighty long way. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I, we're sharing that he healed me when I was sick. When I was lost, he found me. He brought me back again. We share. We share our experiences. And then there, number two, it says, keeping together. Is progress. Mm -hmm. This is the mutual commitment phase. Yeah. We can create a team spirit here at Friendship. Mm -hmm. You can create a team spirit at Greater New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can create a team spirit down at Mount Olive, Glenville. Mm -hmm. In other words, we all have a sense of belonging, as Paul said, because we have been born again into one spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, which gives us our spiritual DNA in order to make us one in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, the body has many members. Many members yes. working together mm -hmm. for the glory of God. Right. Just as a car has many parts, mm -hmm. they all are functioning together in order to ensure the car can get you from point A to point B. Yes, yes, yes. Just as everything else, the body, the hand, mm -hmm. the eyes, mm -hmm. the ears, the brain, the feet. The need, everything working together in order for you to go from point A to point B. Paul says the body of believers are the same thing for the church. We all are to come together collaboratively, collectively, join together in worship, working together that we may glorify our God. He said keeping together is progress. There are many who have started out with us and some of them have abandoned. But if we work together, if we progress together, don't you know we'll make it together? We won't leave anybody behind. Where I go, you go. When I lift up, I lift you up. This is what Paul says for the church. Keeping together is progress. Yes, 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 yes. Hello. My brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Paul says corporate worship is where we can serve and get involved to honor our God. Our last point. Working together is success. Working together is success. It's easy for one person to carry the load of the church, but it will often cause burnout and individualism. If that one person does everything, then the rest of us will sit back and become lazy. Mm -hmm. We'll let that person work themselves to the bone. Mm -hmm. When we know we should have picked up some of the load. Mm -hmm. But yet, we'll sit back. Yeah. But Paul said this should never be 
for the body. He said in order for the body to function, we all must do our part. He says teamwork is a group of people bringing their individual strength and ideas to work together. I have ideals. Rayford have ideals. And we can share idea, ideals. And if he don't like my ideas, it's okay. Because maybe he got a better idea. Yeah. But I'm not supposed to shun his ideas. I'm supposed to agree with his ideas, and when it's my time to shine, don't you know he should help me in my ideas? Yes, yes, yes. But we're all supposed to come together. We may not agree on everything, but that's okay. But because of the body, we should have a common bond yes, to know it's for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is yeah. what he's yeah. saying. Working together is seeing the big picture. Mm -hmm. Many times we say we don't see that. Yeah. I can't see that. Mm -hmm. But won't, don't you know Peter couldn't see it either when he stepped out of the boat? Yeah. 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 But he said, Lord, if it's you, mm -hmm. <laughs> bid me to come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> the Bible says he stepped out. And he began to walk on water. That's right. But he took his eyes mm -hmm. off Jesus. Yes, yeah. And the Bible says he began to sink. Mm -hmm. But yet Jesus was right there, right there. to pick him up. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said they walked together yeah. back to the ship. Yeah. This is what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. When we see our brothers and sisters drowning mm -hmm. in the depths of the worldly affairs, Deacon Austin, we're supposed to be there well, to lend a helping hand. Yes, That's right. That's right. And we must realize our gifts and abilities that they all come from God. That's right. We must understand that not everybody have the same gift. Yes. Know that all God asks you to do is do your very best. Yeah. He don't ask you to jump hoops and do none of that. Skip rope. He, don't, he said do your very best. Then he says, whatever you do, dedicate your gift and do it for the glory of God. He said, don't hold nothing back because God gets all of the glory. So my brothers and sisters, as we close our message out today, we must first look at the ministry of Jesus. Jesus himself was team oriented and I can prove it to you because he understood the great commission. That's right. Jesus understood that he would have to die for the sins of this world. That's right. He understood that he would need those witnesses to go into all the world to teach and to preach the word. Look at Jesus in his teamwork. He chose 12 disciples, all from different neighborhoods, all with different nationality, all from different walks of life. He understood that they would eventually become leaders of the church. They would become witnesses telling those about his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus understood the power of teamwork. My brothers and sisters, yes, sir, yes, sir. Jesus understood yes, that God had chosen him yes. to be the spiritual glue yes, yes, that holds yes. the whole world together. Yes, Jesus understood his mission. He understood him being the leader. He understood all of this. He understood that this bond was simply in love. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I know we buy super glue, mm -hmm. gorilla glue. That glue holds a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad today that can't nobody do me like Jesus. He holds everything together. I can prove it to you. Right there in John chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. Jesus said, greater love have no man than this. That a man lay down his life. For his friend. Yes, but then he pushes it back to us, Brother Campbell. He said, ye are my friend. Yes. And if you do whatsoever, I command you. Mm -hmm. So he have commanded us yes. Yes. 
to pick up the baton, Pastor Rafa, yes, and to run our race. Yes, you have a race, mm -hmm. and I have a race. Yes, but we all need each other yes, to run our race. Yes, See, if I don't have nobody to pass a baton to, mm -hmm. then the church will fail. Yes, but if we got somebody to pass a baton to, yes, all we have to do is tell them, just run your race. Yes, don't worry about nobody else's race. Yeah. But my brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. everything that Jesus did yeah. hinges on love. Yes. Yes, Pastor Ray, for everything hinges on love. Yes, for Jesus said, for God so loved the world yes, that he gave his only begotten son yes, that whosoever believeth in him mm -hmm. should not perish yes but have everlasting life. Yes, Paul in Romans 5 and 8, he said, but God commended his love toward us and yes. that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, 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 yes. But then Jesus, mm -hmm. as he was on the cross, mm -hmm. reminded us mm -hmm. how important we would be to the body of Christ. Right. Look what he said. Jesus said, and if I, mm -hmm. if I be lifted up yes, from the earth, yes, yes. I will draw, draw. Mm -hmm. all men oh, unto me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about it this morning, but I'm thankful that he still got drawing power. Yes, because when I was lost in sin, yes, the Savior yes, drew me in. Yes, and that's just not me alone now. That's some other people. So I'm thankful that his love lifted me and that his love still yes, sir. got drawing power. Yes, sir. And this drawing power mm -hmm. ended in Jesus' death. Yes, sir. He died on Calvary. Yes, he was placed in a borrowed tomb. Yes, but it was on that third day morning. Mm -hmm. Jesus, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, got up with all power in his hand. And because of him, he's the captain of the ship, who is now seated at the right hand of the Father, directing us, helping us, because he's at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. Yes, yes, this is yes. our captain. Mm -hmm. We have work to do. Yes, we are the body of Christ. Yes. Run your race. Yes. Pick up your cross. Mm -hmm. And follow after Jesus. This is all he asks of us to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As his believers. As his disciples. Yes. Pick up your cross. Mm -hmm. And follow me. This is our yes, message. Yes. We're standing all over the building. Yes sir. We offer Christ. Mm -hmm. We invite you to become a body of Christ. Yes, yes, you can yes. come by via a letter, yeah. Christian experience, yes, yes. or a candidate for water baptism. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like being a part of the body of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God never promised the road to be easy, no. but he promised to always be there to help us in our time of need. Will that be one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May God bless you. Keep you as a choir prepared to sing. <laughs> sing choir.
appreciate all of you, what you do, everything you do from the bottom of our heart. Me and Pastor Rafa talk about it how, all the times about how the churches work together, how we work together, we worship together, and we do all this together because we know we need one another, not just in here in friendship, but we know each church needs one another as well in order to have corporate worship. So I appreciate Greater New Jerusalem. I appreciate Mount Olive Glenville. And most of all, I appreciate you, friendship, for all that you do, everything that you do. We appreciate you. If all the hearts and minds clear, we're standing. Oh, Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, once again, we're grateful. Mm -hmm. We're grateful for the body of Christ. Yes, sir. We thank you for Christ, our Redeemer, mm -hmm. that's given us the spiritual DNA yes. to be a part of this spiritual body. Yes, yes. We thank you for everybody that's represented here today. Uh -huh. Every member, whether Friendship, Greater New Jerusalem, or Mount Olive Glenville. We appreciate them, Father God. Yes, we appreciate the gifts that you've given us. Mm -hmm. Stir up the gifts right now that, yes. that we may yes. be able to do the will 
of you, Father. We thank you right now. We thank you for the deacons. We thank you for the deacon wives, the ushers, the musicians, the choir. Father God, the hospitality committee. Everybody under the sound of my weak voice, I thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, to rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.